Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Since this game was released back in 2015 to now, about eight years later, it has held a very odd spot among the rest of the series for many. It was met with very mixed critical reception when it was first released, and Syndicate remains the second lowest selling Assassin's Creed game in the entire series. The only one that sold less was Rogue, a game released in the shadow of Unity for previous generation consoles. However, these sales didn't necessarily reflect a lot of people's opinion on Syndicate. A large reason for these poor numbers was because Syndicate had just released at a bad time. This game came out only a year after Unity, which I love Unity, but obviously there was so much backlash about the bugs and technical issues with the game that by the time Syndicate rolled around, everyone still had a a bad taste in their mouth from Unity the year prior. Ubisoft even officially stated they believed Syndicate's sales were a reflection of Unity's poor launch and a growing disinterest in the Assassin's Creed franchise. Which is a big deal. This is Ubisoft's biggest IP, and when you compare the sales of Unity to Syndicate, that's a massive drop-off in one year to have. There was lots of concern within the company about the negative reputation of Assassin's Creed and if it would be able to recover, which evidently it did with Origins two years later, but the underwhelming launch of Syndicate is what prompted a fundamental change in the series. It's like a domino effect and that led to a whole new RPG trilogy of games. But the thing is, was Syndicate really all that bad or did it just have the misfortune of coming out at a bad time where people were sick of Assassin's Creed and Ubisoft pushing these games out annually. Well, that's what we're here to discuss today. Assassin's Creed Syndicate 8 years later, how does the game hold up? This is a video I meant to make way, way sooner. I mean, that Unity review I made was almost a year ago now, and originally, I intended for this video to come out only a short few months after, but things got a bit busy with new games, and then all the Mirage stuff, but I finally got around to it. Now, of course, I have played Syndicate before, and I liked it well enough. I don't remember loving it when I first played it years ago, but I by no means hated it either. So this was my first time replaying in full in quite a long time, and I definitely have a lot to say about it. It's also interesting to look back on it with a different lens now. Like I said, at the time of this game's release, a lot of people were sick of AC. But now with the RPG trilogy of games, people look back on Syndicate with a newfound perspective. I see some people call this their favorite game in the series, I see others put it towards the bottom. It's always very mixed opinions whenever Syndicate is brought up in a discussion. However, I definitely think it's trended in a more positive direction since its launch, like how the general opinion on Unity has turned very positive all these years later. The same has sort of happened for Syndicate, though not really to the same effect. And not that it was really that hated to begin with, but again, it's easier now to look back on this game with more appreciation. It also happens to be, as of now, until Mirage, basically the last of the more traditional style Assassin's Creed games. Although I will point out that even in this game, you were starting to see a little bit of a shift in the structure, with little hints of RPG elements in there, which is no real surprise when you consider the studio behind Syndicate, Ubisoft Quebec. There's a very mixed opinion on Ubisoft Quebec and the type of AC games they make, to say the least. For those who are unaware, Syndicate was Ubisoft Quebec's first time being the lead studio on an AC game. Prior to Syndicate, nearly all of the games in the series were developed by Ubisoft Montreal, with the exception of Rogue and Ubisoft Sophia. But Montreal was split into divisions, and that's how they would work on so many AC games at once. Prior to Syndicate, Quebec's first foray in the series would come with Assassin's Creed Freedom Cry, the DLC for Black Flag following Adewale, a DLC I actually really like. And in early 2014, Quebec
Quebec began development on codename Victory, which would of course become AC Syndicate. So Syndicate had a little bit under two years of development, which is pretty insane when you think about it. Unity had four years of development after all. However, Unity was developing a new engine and all new systems for the series, while all Syndicate had to do was use the assets and technology from Unity and try to expand and improve upon that foundation. Which I'd say they did successfully in many areas, but there are still a few questionable downgrades from Unity in my opinion, but we'll get into that later. But to give you some perspective, you can see this chart showcasing the development for every game in the series up to Origins, putting Syndicate on the lower end when it comes to development time, getting around the same time as Black Flag, which has a short development time as well, which may shock people considering the massive amount of content in that game. But it's clear that the games that led the start of a new generation, or were meant to be a transitional game, got more development time. AC1, AC3, Unity, and Origins. While those that came right after had shorter development, hence why they share a lot of assets and animations. This applies even now to Mirage, which is getting a little over two years of development and uses a lot of assets and technology from Valhalla. But again, considering Syndicate had less than two years of development and how polished this game feels, it's extremely impressive. And then of course, Ubisoft Quebec would go on to make Assassin's Creed Odyssey and now are currently working on Codename Red that's believed to be releasing next year. Point is, this studio has become an integral part of this franchise, whether you like it or not. And when you play Quebec's games, mainly Syndicate and Odyssey, you can notice some very clear similarities. First of all, Syndicate and Odyssey are very polished games. Regardless of if you like them or not, they feel polished. Not many bugs, the combat feels smooth, even if they aren't my favorite combat systems, and the games have tons of content. Another trademark of Ubisoft Quebec is its lighter tone, which is evident in both Syndicate and Odyssey, even Immortals Phoenix Rising, another game developed by Quebec. And I believe this is actually my biggest issue with Quebec games, but let's talk about Syndicate specifically, since this is about Syndicate after all. Now, I have nothing against lighter tones in storytelling. There's a time and place for both light and dark tones. One isn't better than the other, although you can have a preference. And for me, when it comes to Assassin's Creed specifically, I have largely preferred the darker tones. I feel those stories engage me more, I find them easier to connect with and relate to, it's more likely to get an emotional response out of me. But again, I don't think a lighter tone is bad, as long as it fits. And I feel this is Syndicate's fundamental flaw, because to me, the tone doesn't fit, it clashes. This is a game set in 19th century Victorian London. This is an extremely dark time period. Crime was extremely common, murders and heists went rampant, you have of course Jack the Ripper, there was child labor, and the entire city lived in fear. To me, this setting, like the French Revolution, is ripe for a dark tone. It was a very dark time period. So that's why the tone in Syndicate had always felt so off-putting to me. Because dark things do happen in this game as well, especially in some of the side content, and it completely clashes with this upbeat, go-lucky tone of the game. Even the music supports this lighter tone, but the setting and world it's set in don't. And initially, when Syndicate was in its early stages of development, and was still known as Codename Victory, the game was actually supposed to feature this dark and gritty tone, following a protagonist by the name of Samuel Fay. However, obviously somewhere down the line, that changed. Now who knows necessarily what led to this massive shift in tone during the development period, but it's clear one of the reasons Samuel Fay was abandoned as the game's sole protagonist was because of some fan outrage. You see, at the time specifically, there was some backlash at the fact that the series hadn't featured a female protagonist. Even though Avalyn did exist, there still technically hadn't been a female protagonist in a main entry yet. There was also a controversy about the fact that you couldn't create a female assassin in AC Unity's co-op 
mode and it had everybody play as Arno. I don't even want to get into it because everybody has their different opinions on matters like this, of course. I'm just simply stating this is one of the reasons I believe Samuel Fay was removed as the game's sole protagonist. And perhaps when the concept of the Fry Twins came about, that's when this lighter tone sort of came to be. You can still see Samuel Fay's DNA left in the game though. George, the assassin you meet at the beginning, is actually wearing his robes from the initial concept art. And there's a fantastic mod that actually allows you to wear these robes on Jacob. I'll leave a link to that if you guys want to check it out. But that's why the tone of this game feels off to me at least. I know some people love the lighter tone, and I totally understand that. We all have different opinions. I'll even say that I think the lighter tone Ubisoft Quebec goes for in Odyssey fits that game better than it does with Syndicate. It makes me wonder if they'll go for a similar tone in Codename Red, or try to shake things up. Regardless, I did enjoy my time with Syndicate. I think I liked it more this time than I did when I originally played it years ago, but this class in tone is still probably my biggest issue with it as a whole. And there's a lot of comedy in this game, specifically with Jacob. I'll admit, sometimes it's funny, but it's just a bit too much for me personally. I have a more dry sense of humor, I suppose, and I like it when the comedy is a little bit more subtle in AC specifically, because these are serious, dramatic stories, not comedies. So the constant banter and one-liners, it's a little much for me sometimes. Not to say I don't like comedy, I mean, who doesn't, but with an Assassin's Creed game, the sheer volume of it doesn't fit for me. But the other trademark Ubisoft Quebec has kind of become known for is their push of RPG mechanics in their games. Even though Origins was technically the first game to really embrace that RPG style, there were hints of it in Syndicate. And obviously Odyssey completely embraced it and pushed it further. But Syndicate has a leveling system. It has enemy health bars, granted I turned them off for this playthrough because that's that's my preference, but there are small hints of an RPG in there. And surprise, surprise, I'm personally not a huge fan of it. I think a leveling system is completely unnecessary for the type of game Syndicate is. Sure, Unity kind of had one, but it's not at all like Syndicate's. Unity had different ranks and stars. It's not a full-fledged leveling system per se, but for Syndicate, it's a core part of the game. With progression, combat, stats, the game even locks certain things to you if you're not the proper level. I get why Quebec felt like they needed to add something like this if they wanted to distinguish Syndicate from Unity so people don't just call it a reskinned Unity or whatever, but to me, it's unnecessary. I don't like having to worry about my level whenever I'm fighting somebody in combat, or I can't venture into this specific part of the map because I'm not a high enough level. It works for RPG games because... The those are RPG games, it's designed for it. While Syndicate is a traditional AC game, trying to inject these light RPG features. And again, it just doesn't fit or mesh. Now, the leveling system is nowhere near as massive as those RPG games. It only goes up to level 10, but anytime you fight a higher level enemy, you'll typically end up fighting them for a solid 5 minutes, since you deal no significant damage to their inflated health pool. Unless you take them out in stealth of course, which thank god you can still one-shot assassinate any target. Look, the leveling system is not as invasive as those RPG games, and ultimately it's not like it completely ruins the experience, but it's not something that can largely be ignored either, as all your gear and progression is directly tied to it. And you still have separate progression and customization for Jacob and Eevee, even though their skill points are still connected. But that right there is what makes Syndicate a bit more distinct from every other game in the series. It's a dual protagonist game. And this too may become more of a common trend with Ubisoft Quebec games, as Codename Red is rumored to be a dual protagonist game as well. Now, I've never been a huge fan of dual protagonist games. The concept is cool, but there's very few games that I feel have actually pulled this off successfully. Typically, I 
I just preferred to play as and put all the focus into one character. But like I said, some games have done it very well. And we've got a massive dual protagonist game coming soon in Spider-Man 2 that I'm very excited to see how they pull off. But the way Syndicate does the dual protagonists is a bit strange to me, because Jacob and Evie don't have equal amounts of playing time. Jacob gets more screen time and missions than Evie. There's even a sequence late into the game, I believe sequence 8, where you don't play as Evie at all, it's all Jacob. And apparently Evie was originally supposed to have a bigger or possibly equal role as Jacob until some higher ups at Ubisoft decided against that. So even though it is two protagonists, it still feels like Jacob is focused on more. But I feel one of the most important things dual protagonist games need to nail is making the two characters feel different in gameplay. Syndicate does a decent enough job of this. I think they could have done more, but at least there's a difference between the two characters. I do wish they had more unique animations for both parkour and assassinations. A great example is the difference in swinging animations between Peter Parker and Miles Morales that speak to the characters' individual personalities and their experience as Spider-Man. However, Jacob and Evie largely have the same animations. Most of which are actually borrowed from Arno. They do have different crouch assassination animations, but I would have liked to see different parkour and kill animations to show off the two characters' different styles and personalities more. After all, Jacob is meant to be the combat bruiser archetype, while Evie is the more stereotypical assassin focused on sneaking and stealth. But really the biggest difference between the two has to do with their skills. Jacob and Evie each have unique skills that the other can't acquire. Jacob's being combat related while Evie's stealth related. Evie's style aligns far more with my own personal play style in this game, but again it didn't really matter because I had to play Jacob for a majority anyways. And Evie's ultimate skill essentially is being able to turn invisible when she stands still. Which I do like the idea of since she is a stealth archetype after all, I just wish they thought of a more realistic way to to portray that rather than straight up invisibility. I know it's an animus hack or whatever to explain it, but it's like Arno's disguise ability in Unity. I just wish it was a more immersive and realistic depiction of these characters special skills. It's the same thing with Assassin's Focus in AC Mirage. I love the idea of the ability, but just wish it looked more grounded. I give Syndicate some points here for trying to be unique and ambitious with the dual protagonist approach, I don't feel it's necessary in this series, and it's certainly something I don't want to see in every game, but they pulled it off well enough here. I definitely think other games have done the dual protagonist better, but some have done it worse as well. Syndicate isn't necessarily innovative in that department though. But okay, I know I've been rather negative about Syndicate so far, but I swear I did enjoy my time with this game. So let's talk about what's probably my favorite part of the entire game. Game, the black box missions. The black box missions have to be the best innovation the Initiate Saga of AC games implemented. By Initiate Saga, I mean Unity and Syndicate. It's very reminiscent of Hitman. Definitely not quite as many options and different approaches as Hitman, but still enough to deliver the sensation of having the freedom to kill a target in any which way you please. And Syndicate has plenty of these missions. Each one has a special assassination you can trigger, along with tons of different entry points and unique opportunities. It's like one big sandbox you get to play around in. These missions capture the fantasy of being an assassin so well. They combine so many different elements, stalking your target, planning, infiltrating, using social stealth and parkour. Pulling off one of these missions successfully without being spotted a single time is 
one of the biggest dopamine rushes I've ever had playing video games. The sandboxes are varied and unique in Syndicate 2, and overall well designed. They require lots of planning and mental strategy to pull off, and it's even more satisfying getting to see what that special assassination is, as they're often brutal and creative, rewarding you for going out of your way to do it. I believe these black box missions are one of the best additions they could have made to the traditional Assassin's Creed formula, and it's why I was so excited to hear they would be returning in full for Assassin's Creed Mirage. Sure, they were in the Valhalla Siege of Paris DLC, but nowhere near as massive and fleshed out as they were in Unity and Syndicate. And I have to say, I think I may even prefer the black box missions in Syndicate over Unity. Not only did it feel like there were more of them, but there were more special opportunities and unique assassinations to go with them. It also really helps when Syndicate has such a rewarding stealth system. We praise Unity a lot for its stealth, but Syndicate did quite a lot to try and improve on that further. For me, I think this is most noticeable in the cover system. Unity is quite notorious for its janky cover-to-cover -cover system, and so Syndicate completely rebuilt it, and it works very smoothly. It's so easy to get in and out of cover in this game. You don't have to worry about getting stuck, and it just makes the whole process more seamless. I wish Unity had this cover system, and this is one of the many examples I'm talking about where I feel Ubisoft Quebec does a really great job at making their games feel polished. Now, I was disappointed that Syndicate chose not to bring back the Phantom Blade. This was one of my favorite stealth tools and hidden blade modifications in the entire series, and it was certainly technologically possible considering Syndicate takes place almost a century after Unity, but Syndicate opted to replace the Phantom Blades with throwing knives, which isn't bad, but just looks far less cool in my opinion. Just a missed opportunity to not bring that back, but it does bring tools that have virtually the same effect, though not entirely. Although in Unity you can quick shot and kill certain enemy types with the Phantom Blade, while in Syndicate the throwing knives feel far weaker, and there's very few enemies you can one shot with it, unless it's a headshot of course. But if you play as Eevee, get the right skills and gear upgrades and outfit perks, you can carry like 30 of these things, which is nuts and can't lie, it can be pretty fun to go crazy with. Along with throwing knives though, you of course get the smoke bombs, which were severely nerfed from Unity. Smoke bombs in Unity are absolutely overpowered, and you could carry up to 15 of them with the military belt. Syndicate brought that down to a maximum of 9, and to even get that quantity, you have to wear a specific outfit that grants bonus space and get all the upgrades for it. And speaking of, I do like that you can upgrade your tools in Syndicate, just fleshing out the progression system and giving you more incentive to open chests and find materials. But this nerf to smoke bombs certainly makes a lot of sense, as they could be a bit of a crutch in Unity. There's the hallucinogenic darts, which have a similar effect to the berserk blades, but again, sometimes they won't work on on higher level enemies, or if you don't have them upgraded, which can be annoying. I really hate damage sponge enemies in this series, and it can certainly feel like that at times in Syndicate, but I do like that you can shoot the darts into a little bonfire to get an area of effect. That was a neat touch. Another new tool in Syndicate are the Voltaic Bombs, pretty self-explanatory, they electrocute enemies, although again, they need to be upgraded to be effective in the late game. A new feature to stealth was the ability to kidnap enemies. I really like this addition. It's useful and effective when infiltrating restricted areas, and it's an immersive way to improve the social stealth experience. Another addition to Syndicate in many of its stealth missions was the possibility of environmental kills. A lot of these missions will have hanging barrels that you can knock down onto unexpecting enemies for easy kills. These along with the bonfires you can use your darts on. The opportunity for environmental kills is a nice inclusion. Syndicate also brought back a few features that were once in many AC games, but not possible in Unity, like the ability to carry bodies and whistle to draw enemies towards you. What I don't like, however, and a clear downgrade from Unity, was removing the ability to have a weapon and tool equipped at the same time. In Unity, you could have a projectile equipped on your left slot, and a bomb equipped
equipped on the right at the same time. So you didn't have to constantly switch between them, and you could use all your tools very seamlessly. For whatever reason, this addition was not carried on in Syndicate. And perhaps it's a small thing, but I think it makes a big difference. Again, just one of the many small examples of some bizarre downgrades from Unity that don't have any real rationalization. That carries on into the combat. Now, I've always had very mixed feelings when it comes to this game's combat system. Personally, I really liked Unity's combat. It was nowhere near perfect. It was very unrefined and lacked overall polish, but there was a lot of potential there. I liked how weighty and grounded the combat felt. It still looked flashy like the old game games while creating a significantly more difficult system, especially when fighting multiple enemies at once. There were different types of attacks and small combos you could string together, plenty of weapon variety. I always thought Syndicate should have aimed to build on this combat system and refine it, as opposed to creating a new one from scratch. Because with Quebec's level of polish, I think they could have improved that system and created something really special. But again, they elected to go with something thing new, and the result is mediocre to say the least. Like I said before, it feels polished, but there are some major issues I still have with it. First of all, it uses very different weapon types to what we're used to in the series. Instead of the usual swords, axes, daggers, etc., Syndicate has brass knuckles, cane swords, cookery, and gauntlets. Some people love this and feel it fits well with the setting, and others would much rather use the kind of weapons that we're used to with swords and the like. I prefer using the latter, but I can appreciate them trying to switch things up to better fit the time period, and the weapons can still be very fun to use, especially the brass knuckles. It's different, it's unique for the series, and I can appreciate that, even if it doesn't feel quite as satisfying as using a sword. I also love the execution animations. Those look so badass and always had me purposefully trying to activate those animations. Although the parameters to actually activate them are so inconsistent that it's a toss-up to whether or not Jacob and Evie will actually do it. In truth be told, this combat system can get rather tedious. You attack, you break guard, and you dodge. There's very little variation to that, even with different enemy types. And unlike Unity, you only get one form of attack. There's no heavy, no light attack, it's just an attack with no variation. You can't even parry anymore. Sure, the old counter base system could suffer from the same issues, but it did have different enemies that forced you to attack them with different strategies. But with Syndicate, there's very little variation in the combat when facing different enemies aside from their health. And once you get a grip on this combat system, you'll notice how little it actually evolves as you progress through the game. The difficulty from the combat comes more so from fighting higher level enemies with inflated health and damage more than anything else. Or you're just plain out too weak. There are moments where fights can become prolonged and disengaging as some enemies feel like damage sponges. The combat doesn't feel grounded because your attacks should realistically be killing the enemy you're fighting, but in a similar way to the RPG games, strikes, slashes, and impalements that should very realistically kill your enemy don't. Something I appreciate about those oldest age titles is that all of your strikes only cut into an enemy's flesh when it's a killing blow. Otherwise, your attacks will bounce off of an enemy's armor or graze a non-vital point of their body. While here it feels like every enemy must be wearing the Shroud of Eden with the amount of damage they are able to sustain. Either that or like you're stabbing someone with a plastic knife. Some people may not have a problem with this and may think I'm being a bit nitpicky, but it's a huge killer of a version for me. Same deal with the physics. For some odd reason, Syndicate elects to go with this very wacky, almost cartoonish physics system. You shoot someone with a gun and it can send them flying in the air. The ragdolls look totally unrealistic and floaty. Maybe Quebec was hoping to have some goofy physics for entertainment purposes, like the GTA series is so well known for, but again, more than anything, it's an immersion killer. The physics in Unity were far more realistic 
and grounded looking. And I just can't really understand the justification for this change. It's almost like this combat system aimed to be similar to the Batman Arkham series, but with nowhere near the same amount of depth, complexity, and tools at your disposal. The animations look great, and that's really this combat's saving grace. It's fun for a bit, and there was a period of time when I was starting to come around to this game's combat system, but replaying Syndicate in full just reminded me of how tedious it gets over time, especially when most of the progression involved with it doesn't actually change how the combat looks or feels. Sure, you can do some fancy tricks with the pistol finishers that you can combo into your attacks, but after seeing the same animation dozens of times, it quickly loses its flair. Why Syndicate didn't choose to follow in the promising footsteps of Unity's combat will forever remain a mystery to me. But one of Syndicate's biggest new additions was the ability to recruit and command your own gang of rooks. It functions somewhat similarly to the assassin recruits in the pre-Black Flag days, although admittedly not quite as cool as you're ordering blighter clones in green as opposed to assassins. It's also not the best feeling when you're trying to stealth your way through an area and your rooks decide to stand out in the open and draw the attention of the guards. However, the rooks were fun to have. They created lots of funny moments for me personally, and proved useful in specific scenarios. I believe they perhaps could have been incorporated into the game even more so, and allowed for more customization, because truth be told, I didn't find myself really needing them all that much. I expected a bit more from them, considering it was such a big part of the game's marketing. But like most everything else in this game, the rooks have a skill tree. Syndicate has a large progression system, you can upgrade your gang, tools, and of course Jacob and Evie's individual skills. With the rooks, you can bring more enemy types into your gang, increase their general level so they don't get obliterated by higher level blighters and templars, and eventually you can even call your own carriage. Skills that actually bring new features or mechanics to the game are nice. Ones that just increase your stats, like health boosters, or a general broad increase to your stealth stat, feel lazy and meaningless. It's more so about leveling up so you can fight higher level enemies, than about unlocking a cool new skill or combat move. I also find it strange that you level up by spending skill points in this game. That's completely backwards from like every other game with a leveling system in existence, where you get skill points when you level up. All weapons and gear are also locked behind these levels, so to be able to keep doing damage to those higher level enemies, you're going to have to constantly buy new weapons to keep up. Again, that's more reminiscent of an RPG as opposed to a traditional Assassin's Creed game. Outside of gear and weapons, Syndicate also opted to completely water down Unity's gear customization. Rather than being able to buy, upgrade, and customize each individual piece of gear, instead you're forced into only wearing set outfits, where you can only change your belt, gauntlet, and in the case of Eevee, a cape. Granted, you can still change the color of some of the outfits, but what happened to this huge innovation made in Unity? It's just gone, again with no real rhyme or reason. Now, credit where credit is due, I do love the look of the outfits in this game. Eevees in particular look fantastic, and for Jacob I opted to use the AC Victory mod, which I touched on earlier. Along with this, I used the Hood Up Free Roam mod that allowed me to keep the assassin hoods on at all time, because for whatever reason, there's no hood toggle option. Now, I understand if you like that Syndicate has you remove the hood when standing, it blends in more with the setting, I get that, but I'm always someone who loved the look of the assassins with their hoods and robes, and I never liked that Syndicate only allowed you to wear the hood when crouching. The simple solution to this would be to have an option to have the hood always on or not. Let the player decide based on their preference. It feels like it would be a rather simple thing Thing to include, and yet this is still something we have to ask for in new AC games even to this day. Where the community had to beg Ubisoft Montreal to add a hood always on option in Valhalla, even though they were the exact same studio that provided said option previously in Origins. The inconsistencies and weird regressions between these games never ceases to amaze me. But whatever, as shown many times, the community and modders care more about improving
improving the games than Ubisoft themselves. And while we're on the topic of regression, parkour. Unity's parkour system is pretty beloved amongst the community, even though it doesn't offer the freedom and responsiveness of some of the original games, it looked absolutely fantastic. There were some really unique moves and animations you could pull off with the right know-how, and while it may not always work how you want it to, it looks badass. So what happened with Syndicate? It's almost the exact same free-running system, except without a lot of those cool animations from Unity, the removal of a dedicated jump button, and incessant automation. You know how in Unity you could do a spinning move when climbing up a ledge? Well, can't do that here, who knows why. Syndicate refuses to let you make any kind of jump it considers unsafe, and with the removal of a jump button, the parkour takes away a huge amount of freedom from the player in favor of making it feel more automated and in turn more boring. The reasons for these changes? Your guess is as good as mine. They could have literally copied and pasted everything from Unity, as far as parkour is concerned, and it would be better than what's there currently. Now, don't get it twisted, I'd still take Syndicate's parkour over the most recent games in a heartbeat, but these downgrades from Unity just make no logical sense. And I think this is part of the problem when you have different studios working on different games in the same franchise. If Montreal had been the studio to make a successor to Unity, then I don't think so much of what worked in Unity would have been stripped out. It's like Quebec didn't exactly understand what worked well with Unity. Almost like like they saw the negative response for Unity at launch due to its abundant technical issues, and misunderstood that as issues within the gameplay and almost gutted the entire thing. There are some nice improvements from Unity that they got right, but there's a lot of weird downgrades that I just can't wrap my head around. And parkour is perhaps where it's most noticeable. London also happens to be not as well designed for parkour as Paris from Unity. It's a bigger, but also more spaced out world. World. The buildings aren't as narrow, making it more difficult to keep long parkour runs going, which is why they introduced the rope launcher. I've heard very mixed opinions when it comes to the rope launcher. It's not historically accurate to have this in Victorian London, but neither is a hidden blade, so that argument is kind of redundant. I think most people's complaint with the rope launcher is that it can feel like a crutch and it eliminates some of the practicality of parkour, which I do understand, but honestly, with Without the rope launcher, traversing London would be a pain. Because the buildings are so spread out and the streets are much wider, it would take ages to traverse the city with only parkour, since most buildings don't even connect. So if the rope launcher was in Unity, then I'd agree. It would be absolutely unnecessary because Paris's design and parkour pathing makes it so you can pretty much go everywhere without breaking the flow of parkour. But with London, that's just not possible. So the rope launcher is meant to accommodate that, which I think it does. Now, personally, I'd prefer to use parkour to get around, and the rope launcher is not something that needs to return to the series in my opinion, but for Syndicate, it's needed. Another traversal option meant to accommodate for London's size are the carriages. Come on, it's a game in Victorian London, you have to have carriages. The carriages handle quite well, and they can be useful for traveling longer distances if you opt to avoid fast traveling, like I often do. The missions do slightly overuse the carriages though, in my opinion. This is Assassin's Creed, so I'd rather not have entire missions based on carriage chases or chauffeuring people around. But ramming hostile carriages is admittedly a lot of fun. Again, it felt like they were kind of trying to capture some of that GTA magic with its vehicles, but since all of the carriages for the most part handle the same, there's not much distinction between the different carriage types aside from the amount of damage they can withstand. And in a series where parkour is meant to be the main mode of traversal, the carriages can feel a little bit like a gimmick. However, it's sort of a necessary inclusion when your game is set in Victorian London. The setting is one of the main draws of this game after all, and the entire plot revolves around you liberating London and its many burrows from the claws of the Templars and Blighters. Syndicate has a more open mission structure compared 
to its predecessors, where you're allowed to tackle the missions within a sequence in the order you'd like, along with the different burrows that must be liberated. Although each burrow has a certain level assigned to it, so in reality, there's not too much freedom in the order you choose to liberate them. You have to complete a variety of side missions and tasks before being able to engage in a gang war and free that particular burrow. Those tasks entail bounty hunts, Templar strongholds, and child labor factories. Each time you complete one, a portion of that burrow will be liberated until you've completed all of them and can claim the area for you and your rooks. Liberating burrows is a lot of fun at first. These missions grant you plenty of stealth opportunities and provide you with extra challenges, and as you're completing them, you'll gain XP with a companion you meet in the story that'll grant you special rewards. However, over time I found liberating the burrows to get a little repetitive since there isn't tons of variety with the type of missions you can do. And the gang wars can often feel a bit short and underwhelming, but you have no choice to do some of these because the game will lock main story missions behind them. Now, I liberated them all anyway, so that wasn't a problem for me, but for those who'd rather just play the main story, they can't do that. Which doesn't seem right. The player should be allowed to play in whichever way they see fit. The entire system actually reminds me a lot of a Far Cry game. Many of them have something similar where you need to complete various objectives to free a specific region of the map. It's not exactly innovative, but again, I did enjoy doing these for a while. I just wish that as you progressed and got to the higher level burrows, there would be different types of liberation missions instead of the usual three that repeat themselves. Alongside these though, you have more traditional side quests and activities like the Charles Dickens ghost missions, which were probably my favorite type of side content in this game. They give this spooky atmosphere that I feel is more befitting of Victorian London, and you get to investigate some of the weird and scary scenes among the streets. There's fight clubs, I do feel they once again get a bit repetitive after doing a handful of them, but I still really enjoy the idea of it, and the combat system does look good in this brawler fist fighting style. There's a couple train missions that were a lot of fun, you get to fire a Gatling gun in one of them, that was a highlight. There are carriage races and triathlons, a few different types of income missions, which are good for gaining money obviously, however there's not much variety to those either. Syndicate's side content overall is fun, if not a bit repetitive. I was hoping they would bring back the murder mysteries from Unity, I really like those missions, but I enjoyed a majority of what Syndicate offered, even if some of it does get old very quickly. But what makes this world appealing is just how stunning London is. I think the setting is the reason those who love this game do. I mean, Unity and Syndicate are nearly a decade old and look better than a lot of AAA games releasing now. It's insane what they managed to accomplish at the time. The world is detailed, although not quite as dense as Paris, but they're very different cities at different times, so that's only natural. There's not nearly as many NPCs within the world either, but again, it makes more sense for there to be significantly more NPCs on the streets during the French Revolution than Victorian London. There's some incredible views in this game, and I love how they designed it to feel like the time period. You can see massive smokestacks coming from the factories in the distance, train stations and moving trains that you can climb onto. I mean, the assassin hideout is on a moving train, which is certainly a unique change of pace from previous AC games like Monteregioni or Cafe Theatra. And like those games, you can passively make income in the train safe, using the upgrades to further increase the capacity and rate of which you do so. The crowd events from Unity return to bring more life to the world and provide you with small little distractions. The design of the world may not support parkour and the assassin fantasy quite as well as Paris, but you can't deny this is still a breathtaking world to explore. I'll admit, I'm not a huge fan of the more vibrant and bright color palette the game goes for. I think it looks way better with the moody, atmospheric, kind of gritty look that sweeps over the world during the ghost missions and several other various missions throughout the game. Again, I think that look better supports Victorian London than this sort of bright and upbeat visual style, but that's just me. It's still a beautiful world and setting, I can't deny that. I do feel graphically it looks slightly worse than Unity, but this was intentional 
intentional as a way to try and make the game run better, which at the time I'm sure was appreciated, but now that we have PCs that can run these games well, Unity has definitely aged better in terms of visuals. Not to say Syndicate is a bad looking game, because it by no means is, and it's still aged shockingly well. The last thing I wanted to touch on here though, before getting into the nitty gritty of the story, is the soundtrack. I think most Ubisoft games typically have good soundtracks, some better than others of course, but I can't necessarily recall a game in the Assassin's Creed series where I strongly dislike the soundtrack. Syndicate's OST is certainly more upbeat and supports the game's lighter tone, which I've already discussed at length. For me, it's one of the more forgettable soundtracks in the series personally, but in a series where we have so many iconic OSTs, that's by no means a diss to Syndicate. It's lots of classical sounding music, again to really fit the time period it's set in, and I don't dislike it by any means, it's just not extremely memorable to me. Again, I'm sure some of you feel differently, and that's okay. In fact, I actually listened to a bit of the Jack the Ripper OST, the DLC for this game, which I won't be covering in this video, but I will in a separate video, but I actually prefer that soundtrack to the base games. Plus, it's composed by Bear McCrary, aka God. His work on God of War is just unbelievably good. But now that we've gotten all that out of the way, let's dive in deeper into the story. I want to start by talking about the Fry Twins. If you've watched my videos in the past, you know I'm not the biggest fan of the Fry Twins, but there's a lot of you who are. I mean, if you want to see just how many people adore the Fry Twins, then go into the comments section of my Who's the Most Annoying Assassin video. A fair amount of people really like them, so going into replaying this game, I paid close attention to their characters to see why so many people like them. It's probably something with me personally, where I'm just not a huge fan of the constant banter and one-liners, which is why a character like Jacob could get on my nerves. But a lot of you were saying him being an idiot and making stupid jokes is part of the charm of the character, so we all just have different preferences. What I will say about Jacob though, is I do think there's a much deeper level to the character that isn't focused on much. Jacob is not your stereotypical assassin. Evie fits that mold more. Jacob is more of an outsider, he's reckless, brash, and arrogant, and he doesn't think things through. He's not really the kind of person you'd want to be an assassin, and frankly I'm not even sure if he wants to be one at times. They very intentionally made him the opposite of Evie. Jacob doesn't fit in, he'd rather avoid responsibilities and create chaos, which in turn leaves Evie to constantly clean up his messes throughout the story. The best story arc with Jacob's character in Syndicate is far and away sequence 8 with Maxwell Roth. Roth and Jacob's dynamic is so interesting, and I'd confidently say this is the best sequence in the entire game. Maxwell Roth is who Jacob wants to be. He's finally found someone similar to him, someone who wants to create and relish in the chaos. What separates them is Jacob has a moral compass, while Roth does not. Roth is one of those villains who, as Alfred best put it, Some men just want to watch the world burn. And he nearly does. Literally. Roth has no problem killing innocent children to strike a crippling blow into Crawford Sterick's operation. And he didn't even really care about that, he just wanted to blow things up with someone who shared his craziness. I think Jacob is misunderstood, even by his own sister, who's constantly lecturing him and trying to get him to be something he's not. Perhaps these themes could have been more apparent and focused on in Syndicate's narrative, because you don't get to see much of the internal conflict with Jacob, but it is certainly there. Again, getting to replay this, I could see Jacob with a different lens, not just as a dumb comic relief stereotype, but as something a bit more. Now, does this mean he's one of my favorite protagonists in the series? No, definitely not. But I do feel there's more to him than he often gets credit for. And I think Paul Amos did a great job with the performance. Most people who hate Jacob don't hate the performance, they just don't like how 
how his character is written. I don't really find the character charming like others do. To me, characters like Edward and Ezio do a much better job of that, but I do feel as if I gained a bit of newfound perspective when it comes to Jacob as a character during this playthrough. Another part of the narrative that I wish had been explored more was the Fry twins' father and their place within the Brotherhood. We know that their father passed and that he was essentially a legendary assassin, and his death clearly had a big impact on the two characters, so I wanted to see more of that. Maybe some flashbacks with the father, or a more heartfelt conversation about him between the two. I also would have liked to see more of this brotherhood. We see George at the beginning, and that's it. Jacob and Evie just go off to liberate London. There should have been consequences for them disobeying their orders, like how there was for Arno and Unity, or for Connor and AC3. It felt like there was something missing. I believe George was originally supposed to return in the story at some point before that was cut out, and I think he should have. It felt odd to me that Jacob and Evie were able to do something like this with no repercussions whatsoever, and the way they established George in the game's prologue made it feel like his character would play a significant role in the story, but he never comes back. And man, does this story love its exposition dumps. At the start of the game and each sequence, you'll get Henry, Jacob, or Evie explaining directly to the audience what's happening and what needs to be done about it. They don't even try to be subtle about it either, they just explain everything directly to you, rather than slowly explain the situation and the components of the story through different actions and dialogue over time. It just dumps everything on you at once and expects you to care. Now Syndicate is not the only video game guilty of doing this, but massive exposition dumps like this take out a lot of the intrigue of the story and make it boring. I was curious who wrote this game's story, and was shocked to discover that the story is by Jeffrey Yohalam. He's worked on many of the previous AC games, and was the lead writer on Far Cry 3. In my opinion, one of the best stories ever told in a Ubisoft game, so I was very surprised that Syndicate's story was his handiwork. Not only because it's so drastically different from some of his previous work, but because of some of the absurd exposition dumps that I wouldn't expect from him. But let's talk about the other Fry twin. Evie. Of the two protagonists of Syndicate, I think Evie is a more intriguing and likable character, but unfortunately she doesn't get tons of screen time in comparison to her twin brother. Like I stated previously, she's the opposite of Jacob. Smart, collected, and prefers to do proper research before striking. She's more of how you'd expect an assassin to behave. Unfortunately, the story doesn't do a whole lot with her character though, despite this being a dual protagonist protagonist game, and a good chunk of her story is focused on this love story with Henry that frankly feels forced. There's not much build up to it, and it feels rather irrelevant in the main context of the plot. It's not that I have something against love stories, but if you're gonna do it, do it right. But perhaps the weakest link of this entire story is the game's central antagonist, Crawford Sterick. I've said on many occasions that Crawford Sterick feels like a cartoon villain to me. From the very beginning, in one of Henry's exposition dumps, he says Steric wants to rule the world. He sees himself as the savior of London, and yet we have no context or motivation for why he does what he does. Maxwell Roth is just straight up crazy and wants to have fun, but Steric supposedly believes he's doing the right thing. But then he'll go and do something you'd see a cartoon villain do, like killing one of his henchmen for interrupting his grieving, or constantly spouting off generic villain monologues. Seriously, nearly every scene this man is in is him giving some sort of monologue that's supposed to make him feel threatening and intimidating, but it just has the opposite effect. The game tries so hard to make you scared of this guy, and that's precisely what makes him so boring. He's even got the classic villain mustache if that wasn't a clear enough sign that he's evil. He also has zero interaction with the protagonist of the game until the very last sequence. The main villain should not be meeting 
being the hero for the first time in the last 30 minutes of the game. But Steric is too busy hiding in his office, delivering monologues to the audience, instead of going out and doing something. Maxwell Roth and Pearl Attaway make for way more interesting antagonists in a fraction of the screen time that Steric has. Similar to Roth, Pearl has a very entertaining dynamic with Jacob, and her turning out to be Steric's cousin is one of the few twists that initially surprised me when I first played the game. Syndicate is one of the few games in the series where I believe a good majority of the side antagonists are better than the main antagonist of the game. What makes Steric even more underwhelming is the ending. So he finally shows up and claims the Shroud of Eden, only to immediately be beaten by Jacob and Evie in an anticlimactic final boss fight. This final boss fight is so bad. First of all, the combat makes it feel bland, especially since Steric is wearing the Shroud of Eden, making him a literal damage sponge, and he constantly sends Jacob and Evie flying to the other side of the room, where the game has you switch between them until you finally take him down. This final boss was so bland and repetitive, it actually had me laughing at how silly it was. And through the power of love and teamwork, Jacob and Evie are able to take down Steric. Because it wasn't about the peace of Eden, it was the friends we made along the way. And the game ends with absolutely no consequences. Jacob sent the entire city into chaos and collapsed the economy, him and Evie disobeyed the Brotherhood, and they eliminated the person who was supposedly keeping the city alive, and yet the game ends happily ever after. Oh, and the conflict between Jacob and Evie throughout the entire story results in one argument that's almost immediately resolved after they defeat Steric. So what was really the point? I guess that's a question I have to many of the events that happened in Syndicate's story. It had so many promising components and potential for a great story here, and it just falls flat for me. Oh, and the modern day might as well have not even existed. This is more of a problem with the Assassin's Creed series after AC3, but the modern day really doesn't have a lot of progression or impact. It felt like filler. I'm always happy to see Sean and Rebecca, and there was a really nice scene where Sean talks about Desmond, and that ending felt like it may have been setting something up, but then they go and resolve that in a comic. The modern day storylines were so poorly planned out after AC3. Thank god we're finally back on track in that department with the newest games, but in Syndicate you don't even get to play in the modern day. You're just watching all of these cutscenes through a drone. Like what? Why can't we play as Sean or something? Why am I watching this big fight at the end between assassins and Templars instead of playing it? Don't get me wrong, it was cool seeing Galena and all, but I don't understand why any of this couldn't have been playable. Story-wise, it's a step up from Unity's modern day, because at least there is a story, but we take another step back because there's no playable sections. Unity's modern day story may have been non-existent, but at least there were some cool time displacement sections you could play through. I know I sounded rather negative about Assassin's Creed Syndicate in this video, but like I said, overall I enjoyed my time replaying the game. The stealth was ultimately the saving grace for me. I far and away had the best time with those black box assassination missions, I enjoyed some of the side content, and there were some specific storylines in the narrative that stood out, but ultimately this story falls as one of my least favorites in the entire series. I'm sorry if that offends you, but that's that's just my opinion. All in all though, Syndicate has aged particularly well for an 8 year old game, and in an era where a more old school style of Assassin's Creed game is hard to come by, it's appreciated a lot more. And compared to the rest of the series, AC Syndicate is far from the best game to me, but it's also quite far from the worst. But again, that's just me. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what you think about Assassin's Creed Syndicate, and what you feel some of its best and worst qualities are. As I'm making this video, I'm in the midst of playing the Jack the Ripper DLC, which I hope to make a separate video for, but so far I'm actually really liking it, and there's some great improvements from the main game that I'm excited to talk about, so stay on the lookout for that. As always, if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you left a like, and considered subscribing to the channel if you're new, and other than that, thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day, assassins.